Hello, my name is Rachel Chimuka, and over the summer, I worked as a research assistant in the Climatology Research Lab at Simon Fraser University, studying the state dependence of the climate and carbon cycle response to carbon dioxide removal. In 2015, nations gathered together to sign the Paris Agreement, which stipulated that they would constrain atmospheric warming to 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels by the year 2100. Recent research shows that decreasing carbon dioxide emissions to zero will not be enough to reach this climate target. We will also need to start taking out carbon dioxide from the atmosphere using carbon dioxide removal technologies. However, before implementing these technologies, it's important to understand how the climate and carbon cycle response to carbon dioxide removal differs depending on the state of the climate system. We use the University of Victoria Earth System Climate Model to perform two simulations, the equilibrium simulation and the transient simulation, which represent two different climate system states. The equilibrium simulation represents a climate system that is in equilibrium with a carbon dioxide concentration that is twice the pre-industrial level, that's 560 parts per million whereas the transient simulation represents a climate system where the carbon dioxide concentration increases at 1% per year from the pre-industrial level, that's 280 parts per million, to twice the pre-industrial level, that's 560 parts per million. In both of these simulations, a one-time instantaneous or pulse removal of carbon dioxide is applied in the year 1870. Our results section shows the equilibrium simulation response in blue and the transient simulation response in red for various climate and carbon cycle variables, including atmospheric carbon dioxide, surface air temperature, ocean carbon, land carbon, vegetation carbon, soil carbon, as well as the air to land carbon flux and the air to ocean carbon flux. We also show the equilibrium and transient simulation responses for NPP, that's net primary productivity, soil respiration, and the leaf litter flux. The equilibrium and transient simulation responses differ for each of the variables shown. This is due to climate system inertia, which is the response of the climate system to both the past and the current conditions. For example, in the atmospheric carbon dioxide variable, the transient simulation response is due to two factors, the pulse removal applied in the year 1870, as well as the prior increasing carbon dioxide concentration at 1% per year. Whereas in the equilibrium simulation response, this is only due to one factor, that is the pulse removal alone. Therefore, to determine the state dependence of the climate and carbon cycle response to carbon dioxide removal, additional simulations will be required to isolate the response to the pulse removal in the transient simulation, then compare this to the equilibrium simulation, which also represents the response to the pulse removal alone. Our findings also show that the land carbon response in the transient simulation is not what we would have expected the land carbon response can generally be calculated by subtracting soil respiration in black from the net primary productivity in green. However, in our study, this is not the case. This discrepancy may be due to a lag in carbon transfer from the leaf litter to the soil. However, further research will be required in order to confirm this.